What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. We're going to take a look at the history of the welterweight division. This division was established in 1880. And the first weight began at 142 pounds. It would later be upgraded to 145 pounds. And then it would move up to 147 pounds. Now, your first champion was Patty Duffy. And we're going to go through that in our discussion with the welterweight division. But I want to first show you some images of some great fighters in that division. The mysterious Billy Smith. We started off. You would have great fighters, such as Ruth Fern. Who you're looking at right here. Mickey Walker, the toy bulldog. Matty Matthews, the Dixie King. Tommy Freeman. This is the first black welterweight champion, the Barbados Demon, Joe Walcott. He would eventually become roommates with the first black heavyweight champion, Jack Johnson. And he would show Jack Johnson the tricks of the trade. Mickey Walker, once again, the toy bulldog. Yeah, Jack Britton. Ted Kitt Lewis would have a 20 fight round robin amongst themselves. Billy Graham, Ray Robinson, and Kid Gavilon. Oh, what a fight that was. Fought twice once in Yankee Stadium and once in Philadelphia. Pilazzo would split the welterweight championship belt with Mickey Walker. Here you have Henry Armstrong, who would collect that title from this man here, Barney Ross, two years left. 1938, the Madison Square Garden Bowl. Henry Armstrong would simultaneously hold two belts at that time. Featherweight championship belt that he would gain from Petey Sarone, New York's Madison Square Garden. That would make him the first black American featherweight champion of all times. Tony Gennaro, very tough and rugged fighter. Gave Rocky Graziano fits, but Tony Gennaro would get his face busted by Jake LaMotta because his wife stated he was a handsome looking young man. Tony Pallone, he was a numbers runner for the mob, walked with a limp, but he could fight. Ray Robinson. Here's Ted Kid Lewis. Jack Britton. The Boxing Marvel. Pilazzo. Jackie Fields had the pleasure of meeting him. And he would split the title back and forth with young Jack Thompson. Hammer and Henry Armstrong, one of the greatest fighters of all time. I have him ranked number four of the greatest fighter in any weight division of all times. John Corbett III, who would take the title away from Jackie Fields, but he would be stopped in one round. As you see, his position and stance is a southpaw. He'd be stopped by the babyface assassin. Jimmy McLaurin. What a career, what a fighter he was. The career he had was amazing. He was in there with the best, the very best. Here you have Fritzy Zivic, who had left the welterweight championship belt 1940, New York's Madison Square Garden, October 4th to be exact, from Henry Armstrong. 
Ray Robinson would be on that undercard. He would begin his professional debut. Here you have Bonnie Ross. Phenomenal fighter he was. Out of Chicago. Jose Napolis. His name would be Butter in Spanish. Virgil Aikens. Now, Virgil Aikens, very interesting. He would lose the welterweight tournament. Carmen Basilio would retire from the welterweight division because he wanted to challenge Ray Robinson for his title. He did, and he would win the middleweight championship belt. That division was wide open. And Virgil Aikens would lose the final eliminator to Don Jordan. Here you have Johnny Saxton out of Newark, New Jersey. He would go back and forth, exchanging that title with the young farmer, Carmen Basilio. One of my greatest fighters of all times, Philadelphia. His name was Gil Turner. Oh, what a fighter this man was. He had a war. I mean a war. With Kit Gavilon. He was in Philadelphia. Went 11 rounds, and that was a hell of a fight. Johnny Saxon, Kit, and uh, Ray Robinson. Tony DeMarco was some puncher. He would have two fights with Carmen Basilio. We'll learn about all that when we go through the lineage of the welterweight division. You're going to see a lot of Ray Robinson doing this visual. Because Ray Robinson is an outstanding welterweight. Unfortunately, there's not footage that you could find of Ray Robinson, although there are three real to reels that I personally have. Charlie Fusseri, which was Ray Robinson's last welterweight title defense. Sammy Angard. Marty Servo. Now, Johnny Bratton was out of Chicago. He would fight nine rounds with Ike Williams with a broken jaw. Then he would repeat that. Fighting nine rounds with a broken jaw with Kit Gavilon. So join me. In my conversation with you. With the welterweight division. As we explore the titles. How they were exchanged. From fighter to fighter. Now, the welterweight division would begin in 1880. It was established 
to bridge the gap between the lightweight and the middleweight divisions. Now, the welterweight division would begin at the weight of 142 pounds. It would later be raised to 145 pounds. American records would show that Patty Duffy would be the first champion in boxing. Then he fought mysterious Billy Smith. 1892. Lineup of champions in this division. We'll start December 14th, 1892. The mysterious Billy Smith would knock out Danny Neiman. San Francisco, 14 rounds. July 26th, 1894. Tommy Ryan. Without point, mysterious Billy Smith. 20 rounds. In March 2nd, 1896, Kid McCoy when I got Tommy Ryan. And he was stopping 15 rounds. Now Tommy Ryan was a middleweight. And he would move up. a light heavyweight. But he was a bona fide middleweight who would also fight in the welterweight division. And he's underrated. Extremely underrated is Tommy Ryan. He's a phenomenal middleweight champion he was. Now January 15th, 1900, Lou Firms would win the title for Mysterious Billy Smith on a file. The fight took place in Buffalo, New York. And it went 21 rounds before the referee would decide to call a fight to a hole. And it was stated that mysterious Billy Smith had applied dirty tactics on Wu Firm. October 16, 1900. Matty Matthews outpointed Wu Ferns in Detroit, Michigan in 15 rounds. I showed you images of all these fighters. May 24th, 1901. Wu Firms had played a very important role during this time in boxing. Why? Because he knocked out Matty Matthews in Toronto, Canada, 10 rounds. And that upset the Apple card. No one thought that would happen. Wu Firms was knocked out by Joe Walcott, December 18th, 1901. The Barbados Demon, Fort Earn, Canada, in five rounds. And history was made because Joe Walcott would now become the first black welterweight champion in boxing history. But something strange would happen on the night of April 30th, 1904. Dixie Kidd would win on a foul against the Barbados Demon Joe Walcott, San Francisco, California. 20 rounds. Referee Dick O'Sullivan had put a wager on his belt. And he would wait the entire 20 rounds before he decided that Walcott would be disqualified because of a foul. Fight should have never taken place because Joe Walcott was two and a half pounds overweight anyway. But that was one of the black eyes, no pun intended, in boxing history. And that was amazing. October 16th, 1906, Honey Medley, without point Joe Walcott, at Chelsea, Massachusetts, in 15 rounds. April 23rd, 1907, Mike Twin Sullivan, outpointed Honey Medley, in Los Angeles, California, in 20 rounds. Now, Mike Twin Sullivan, would face Stanley Ketchum. Stanley Ketchum would be middleweight champion of the world. And Sam Langford had called out Mike Twin Sullivan and his brother Jack Twin Sullivan said that he would fight him on the same night. Winner take all. The fight was rejected by the Sullivan brothers. 
In Mike Twin Sullivan, I outgrew the weight class. The title was variously claimed by Jimmy Gardner, Jimmy Clabby, Ray Bronson, Clarence Kit Ferns, Mike Gibbons, Kit Graves, Mike Glover, Ted Kit Lewis, Jack Britton, for many years. Ted Kit Lewis would establish his claim in 1915. August 31st, 1915, Ted Kitt Lewis would outpoint Jack Britton in Boston, Massachusetts in 12 rounds. And this was the first of 20 fights that these men would compete with one another. That title would exchange back and forth. He had an American and a European fighter. This was classic. March 17th, 1919, Jack Britton knocked out Ted Kitt Lewis in Ohio. Nine rounds. 1919 was a very interesting year. Would be the year that Jack Dempsey would knock out the lumbering giant, Jess Willard, Toledo, Ohio, July 4th. And Jack Dempsey would become the heavyweight champion of the world. He was a hobo. He was known as Kid Blackie. But that fight would be remembered a plaster of Paris. Oh. You also had the AEF, American Expeditionary Forces. You had Leo Patterson, who was a lightweight champion, black fighter. And he would defeat Billy Graham. You would also have a fighter In 1919, he would have 45 fights that year. His name was the Pittsburgh Windmill, Harry Greb. March 17th, 1919, what a year. And what a fight between Jack Britton and Ted Kidd Lewis. November 1st, 1922, Mickey Walker outpointed Jack Britton in Madison Square Garden, 15 rounds. Another great year was 1922. Because in 22, Sam Langford would knock out Tiger Flowers in two rounds. It would also be the year that Benny Leonard would defeat Jack Britton. It would also be the year George Compartier would lose his title to Balenciki. Balenciki would become the first black light heavyweight champion of all times. May 20th, 1926, Pete Latso outpointed Mickey Walker. Scranton, Pennsylvania, 10 rounds. June 3rd, 1927, Joe Dundee outpointed Pete Latso at the Polo Grounds in New York for 15 rounds. July 25th, 1929, Jackie Fields had one on points. And they recorded a foul against Joe Dundee. Detroit, Michigan. And the fight only lasted two rounds. May 9th, 1930. Young Jack Thompson appointed Jackie Fields. Detroit, Michigan. 15 rounds. Jackie Fields was a two-time welterweight champion. Young Jack Thompson was as well. But he was the second black welterweight champion of all times. Behind the Barbados Demon. Joe Walcott. September 5th, 1930. Tommy Freeman outpointed young Jack Thompson at Cleveland, Ohio in 15 rounds. April 14th, 1931. Young Jack Thompson would knock out Tommy Freeman in Cleveland, Ohio in 12 rounds. That was a classic. Young Jack Thompson, very underrated. Had a very good jab. And he taught the tricks of the trade to a lot of great black fighters during that time. Black Fast and many others. September 5th, 1930. Tommy Freeman outpointed young Jack Thompson. In Cleveland, Ohio, 15 rounds. Oh, what a fight that was. October 23rd, 1931. Lou Bullard 
I appointed Young Jack Thompson in Boston, Massachusetts. 15 rounds. January 28, 1932, Jackie Fields I appointed Lou Ballard at Chicago, Illinois in 10 rounds. And this was something else. So a lot of people had money on this fight. And boxing began to be watched closely. February 22nd, 1933, Young Jack, Young Corbett III, that I appointed Jackie Fields and San Francisco, California in 10 rounds. Young Corbett III wouldn't hold that title very long. May 29, 1933 of the same year. Jim McLaurin and a babyface assassin, baby assassin had knocked out young Corbett III in Los Angeles, California. But it only took him one round. That was spectacular. Because young Corbett III was a southpaw and Jimmy McLaurin was one time a flyweight contender. As a matter of fact, he ended the career of Pancho Villa. Hit him in the jaw. Pancho Villa had tooth surgery the day of. And the blood had clotted in his throat and he would die. Suffocate from his own oxygen. Lack thereof. May 29th, 1933. Jim McLaurin knocks out the young Corbett III. My God. May 28, 1934, Barney Ross outpoints Jim McLaurin. New York's Madison Square Garden Bowl, Long Island City. 15 rounds. And what was interesting about the New York Madison Square Garden Bowl is that no champion has ever defended his title in that arena. You had Pimo Carnera. and Max Baer. Yeah, Barney Ross, Henry Armstrong. They would all take the title away from the champion. September 17, 1934, Jimmy McLaurin outpointed Barney Ross at Madison Square Garden Bowl in 15 rounds. May 28, 1935, Barney Ross outpoints Jimmy McLaurin the New York Polo Grounds, 15 rounds. What classics these men would provide the audience. May 31st, 1938, Henry Armstrong outpoints Barney Ross at the New York Madison Square Garden Go Bowl, Long Island City, 15 rounds. October 4th, 1940, 57, would outpoint Henry Armstrong, New York Madison Square Garden, and 15 rounds. Now, Henry Armstrong, May 31st, and 38, when he outpointed Barney Ross, he was the current featherweight champion of the world. He would now pick up another strap and he would hold those titles together. But later that year, he would lose his lightweight championship belt. And he would give up his featherweight championship belt couldn't make the weight. But October 4th, 1940, Fritz Zivic would outpoint Henry Armstrong. Madison Square Garden. And on the undercard of that particular fight, Ray Robinson would begin his professional debut after the Golden Gloves competition. And he would take on a fighter by the name of Joe Escaveria who's a Puerto Rican fighter who wind up becoming a cab driver. Reminds me of Carlos Ortiz. But Ray Robinson impressed everyone that particular evening. As a matter of fact, the majority of the fight fans didn't just come to see Henry Armstrong and Fizzy Zivic. They came to see Ray Robinson. And that was incredible. July 29, 1941, Freddie Ray Cochrane outpoints Fizzy Zivic. It was at the Robert Stadium in Newark, New Jersey. The fight lasted 15 rounds. February 1, 1946, Marty Servo knocks out Freddie Ray Cochrane in 2 minutes and 54 seconds of the fourth round. New York's Madison Square Garden. He would win. 
the welterweight championship of the world. The referee was Eddie Joseph. And he would recommend referee many fights moving forward. August 10th, 1946, Marty Servo signed to meet Ray Robinson for the title. And after two postponements, Servo abandoned the throne. He retired due to what he says was a nose injury because he faced Rocky Graziano. Rocky Graziano did a number on him. But many didn't think that's the true reason why he retired. They believe he didn't want to face Ray Robinson once again. He didn't want to lose his title to Ray Robinson because Ray Robinson had defeated him twice (laughs) before that. The New York Commission attempted to get an elimination going. Ray Robinson would have a fight with Tommy Bell Now, Bell was ranked number seven. Robinson was ranked number one. But they couldn't get the other fighters to agree to the terms and conditions. Because Ray Robinson to be truthful with you was feared in that welterweight division. Many knew who Ray Robinson was. He was a knockout artist. He could punch. He could box. And he could brawl if need be. And during those days, there was no way in the world white fighters was going to be facing a black fighter and be humiliated in that way. You had a lot of good ones during that time. Robinson vacated the title after winning the middleweight championship belt February 14th, 1951. It was an NBA elimination match between Johnny Bratton and Charlie Fuseri. Now I mentioned Charlie Fuseri was Ray Robinson's last title defense. So he got the opportunity to face Chicago's own Johnny Bratton. Now Ray Robinson, when he went up and chased Jake LaMotta, St. Valentine's Day Massacre in Chicago, He would then become the fourth black welterweight champion in boxing history. Actually, he would be the fifth black welterweight champion. We make that correction. The first black champion you had in a welterweight division was the Barbados Demon Joe Walcott. Second, you had Dixie Kidd. The third one, you had young Jack Thompson. The fourth one was Henry Armstrong, number five was the great Ray Robinson. And as I stated, he would relinquish his title to challenge for the middleweight championship belt in Chicago against Jake Lamar. February 14th, 1951. May 18th, 1951, Kid Gavilon would defeat Johnny Bratton, 15 rounds in New York. And this bout was recognized as a world championship contest, both the NBA and the New York SAC. But this decision was not accepted universally. Then upon the retirement of Charlie Holmes of France from the welterweight class, Gavilan had gained international recognition by defeating Billy Graham. Now, let me clarify something with you. As a matter of fact, let's do a part two to this video and we'll pick up with this conversation. Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Gulf Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Let's listen out for part two of the history of the welterweight division. When we come back, we'll discuss what happened and the situation with Charlie Holmes right here on the museum of the Forgotten Fistigo series.